This episode of On the Record is brought to you by AgriSolutions. Welcome to On the Record. I'm your host, Ben Thorpe. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. On May 15th, Kubota reported its total revenue for the first quarter of the year increased year over year to $5.6 billion. Overseas revenue specifically rose 42% from the prior year to $4.4 billion. The company does not report farm equipment sales alone and includes engine sales revenue in that segment. So Kubota's total farm equipment and engines revenue reached $3.8 billion for the first quarter, an increase of 33% from $2.8 billion in the first quarter of last year. Overseas revenue in this segment totaled $3.3 billion, up 38% year over year. Meanwhile, North American farm equipment and engines revenue totaled $1.5 billion for the quarter, up 41% year over year. This puts the percentage of Kubota's total farm equipment and engine revenue coming from North America at 41%, up from 39% in the first quarter of last year and 38% in the first quarter of 2019. Kubota's total revenue in North America was $2.3 billion, up 49% from $1.6 billion in the first quarter of last year. Revenue from the U.S. specifically was $2.1 billion, up 51% year-over-year. Note Kubota's regional revenue breakdown does include revenue from outside its farm equipment and engine segment. The percentage of Kubota's first quarter revenue coming from North America rose to 41% of total revenue versus 37% last year and 34% in 2019. The percentage coming from the U.S. specifically rose to 37% from 32% in 2022 and 30% in 2019. This week's dealers on the move are Titan Machinery and Florida Coast Equipment. Case IH and New Holland dealer Titan Machinery recently announced its acquisition of Midwest Truck Parts in Dawson, Minnesota, and will add the full Case IH lineup to that business. Titan's marketing director Mike Hall said the additional location fills a gap in coverage in that part of Minnesota. Florida Coast Equipment announced June 6th that it had opened a new location in Mims, Florida. The new facility will serve the communities of Titusville, Oviedo, and Melbourne in Florida's Space Coast with a range of Kubota products. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thank you very much, Ben. Of course, as we know, precision specialists often wear many hats. Technician, salesperson, business owner, even farmer sometimes. Well, Bruce West barely has enough closet space for all the hats he has to wear as owner of West Enterprises, an independent dealership in Western Illinois. Bruce was nice enough to give us a peek behind the curtain during one of his busiest times of the year. He drives about 250 miles a day visiting customers across the state on only one cup of coffee, and he started a busy morning off with this visit to an organic farm to check out a customer's new Treffler Precision Tine Harrow in action for the first time. Next up, he stops by some longtime strip tillers who are interested in adding speed tubes to their planner for precision planning. So Bruce checks out their setup and sees what they need so he can build a quote for the order. Then after a quick lunch, he visits a no-tilling father-son duo to make sure everything's going smoothly with their new Ag Leader Right Spot sprayer technology. So Bruce is always trying to stay ahead of the curve. I asked him what the next big thing in precision ag is going to be. We all talk about autonomy uh, and uh, whether it be the individual tractor that's pulling a big 16 and 24 row planter or swarm technology where we got a whole bunch of two rows. Uh, that's the thing that we're talking about, but that's still probably five to 10 years away. And so we're uh, looking at some things in, in the interim. And uh, right now it appears to me that the optical related items uh, uh, are the next uh, kind of big thing. Uh, I also feel that kind of mainstream is going to be more of the uh, pulsing sprayer types of products uh, using PWM technology for nozzles to to uh, control droplet size and, and improve accuracy of coverage. Uh, that's going to be more of a mainstream thing here in the next uh, one, two, three years. And we'll have much more insight from Bruce during the next edition of Day in the Cab and the upcoming edition of Precision Farming Dealer and online on precisionfarmingdealer.com. That'll do it for the Technology Corner. I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Noah. Dawn Equipment of Sycamore, Illinois announced June 1st that all sales of several of its product lines will now be sold through SurePoint Ag Systems of Atwood, Kansas. 
This includes its screw-adjust trash wheels, coulter attachments, and closing wheels. Dawn said it will still offer support, service, and parts for products sold prior to June 1st of this year. In theory, the transition will connect to John Deere's business. In March of last year, John Deere announced it had entered into a joint venture with Surefire Ag Systems, renaming it to SurePoint Ag Systems and giving it access to select Deere technologies. Deere's annual 10K SEC filing referred to the joint venture as Deere acquiring an 80% stake in SurePoint. At the same time, Dawn Equipment also said it will be shifting to offer complete implements and individual units in the strip till and cover crop markets, as well as other low impact ground engaging products. These had formerly been marketed as underground agriculture. The shift to full implement production has been on Dawn's radar for a few years now. Back in a March 2021 interview with Ag Equipment Intelligence, Dawn's then CEO, Joe Bassett, forecast a decline in the mid sized ag equipment manufacturer market as well as the attachment market. At the time, Dawn Equipment was in the process of adding manufacturing capacity for its full-size implements in a facility in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Bassett said, The aftermarket era, where growers assemble a lot of aftermarket options to customize their planners, I think is over. It's gotten to be too much. There are too many gadgets. By the time you attach everything, the only piece left of the original planner is a couple of pieces of metal. So we said, why don't we just replace that too and make it a complete solution? We reached out to Dawn Equipment and John Deere regarding the news, but did not get a statement in time for this newscast. In the latest update to the Purdue University CME Group Ag Economy Barometer, growers' investment plans were down month over month. The Farm Capital Investment Index fell six points to a reading of 37 compared to a month earlier. This is the lowest reading since last November. Among the 76% of producers who said it's a bad time for large investments, 67% said the key reasons are price increases for machinery and new construction, as well as rising interest rates. The percentage of growers concerned about farm machinery inventories remains low at 3%, while the percentage of those unsure about their farm profitability rose to 13%. At 35%, the percentage of growers most concerned about rising prices was at the second lowest reading recorded since July of 2022. Among top concerns for their operations in 2024, higher input costs remain the most popular choice at 34%, while lower crop and livestock prices rose to 26% as the second most popular option. Those most worried about rising interest rates fell to 22%. This week's data point is brought to you by the Dealership Mind Summit. According to the Association of Equipment Manufacturers 2023, the Economic Impact of Equipment Manufacturing Industry Report, Texas ranks number one among U.S. states for direct equipment manufacturing contributions. This includes having the most direct equipment manufacturing GDP contribution at $11.2 billion. Texas also contributes $11.5 billion in labor income and has the most direct equipment manufacturing jobs at over 50,000. Illinois has the second highest number of direct equipment manufacturing jobs at almost 37,000, as well as the second highest direct GDP contribution at $9.3 billion. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and store suggestions to bthorpe at lessertermedia.com. For On the Record, I'm Ben Thorpe. Until next time, thanks for joining us. <laughs>